Now for a look at the state of the chip sector ahead of NVIDIA's highly anticipated earnings report later this month. Let's bring in Chris Miller, associate professor at Tufts Fletcher School and author of Chip War, the fight for the world's most critical technology. Uh, Chris, uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, I mean, we seem to we constantly go through these rounds of, you know, U.S. government putting on export controls over some class of chips uh, to China or others. Uh, maybe it hits NVIDIA stock. Maybe people get concerned about uh, the market isn't as big as we thought. Uh, and then, of course, there's some kind of response from China to try to do it themselves. Maybe just set it up in terms of what the state of play is. Is this just the world we're going to be living in for a while? Well, we're almost two years into U.S. restrictions on companies like NVIDIA and their ability to sell advanced AI processors into China. And China's, of course, trying to respond to this by uh, building their own high-end AI chips. Right now, China is still meaningfully behind. And we know this because Chinese firms are importing large volumes of the lower-end NVIDIA chips that the company still allowed to sell into China. But it's widely expected that the U.S. is going to ratchet up the restrictions at some point later this year. And we've just seen reports from The Wall Street Journal that Huawei is readying a new AI chip that's supposed to be better than the previous version and perhaps more able to compete with what NVIDIA uh, can sell. So this is sort of a cat and mouse game. The U.S. ratchets up, China responds. And I think we should expect this to go forward uh, far into the future. And of course, the stated rationale is to, you know, withhold certain technologies from China that could be used in a way that compromises U.S. national security. Do we have a sense of, of exactly how effective that is, how much it might restrain uh, capabilities of other countries, how much of a head start it gives uh, the U.S. and its allies? Well, the, the difficulty with the national security rationale is that the the actual focus is AI, and AI is relevant for the civilian sector. It's also relevant for intelligence agencies and the military. And so the U.S. goal is really to make it harder for China to be a leader in AI. And I think if you look at the landscape right now, it's U.S. firms who are out in front. And you can certainly get some anecdotal evidence from China that lack of access to sufficient computing power, the type of computing power provided by chips like NVIDIA's, is a challenge to China's AI researchers and to Chinese companies that are trying uh, to scale up. And that's exactly why they're pouring billions and billions of dollars into trying to build out their own chip making ecosystem that can compete with companies like NVIDIA. Do we have a sense of whether that's effective? I, I guess I'm trying to figure out on a practical level, you know, what the differential is going to be. And, you know, c considering that the Chinese Internet is kind of closed to, to the rest of the world and vice versa, I, I just don't know exactly what we're fighting over here. Well, I think the U.S. realizes that China's AI ecosystem will be defined by Chinese firms. But what it wants is in the rest of the world, U.S. AI firms to have a real lead. So the U.S. can set the rules of AI uh, around the world. And so that U.S. firms create the infrastructure that undergirds AI, not just in the United States, but in other countries, too. And right now, I think that's more or less playing out. If you ask who's building the data centers that are going to train and deploy AI systems, it's largely U.S. firms, even in third countries. And I think that's what the U.S. hopes to see going forward. And by restricting Chinese firms' access to high-end chips, the U.S. is hoping to keep them behind, make them less competitive in third markets, and therefore provide an advantage for U.S. players. And Chris, as a sidebar that's you know not really a sidebar, I know the defense industry in particular is, is somewhat frustrated that we haven't weaned our defense uh, apparatus reliance on Chinese chips. If nothing else, it feels like maybe that's not the place to be dependent upon that supply. You know, I think that's right. I think the defense industry uses a wide range of chips, some pretty high end, but a lot much lower end, some chips that were designed 20, 30, even 40 years ago. And a lot of these lower end chips are produced in large volumes in China. And so it has taken a very long time for defense firms to find alternative sources of supply for some of these lower end chips. Yeah. And what about the effort? I mean, it's a multi-year effort to, to bring more manufacturing uh, back to the U.S. or allied countries. And is that going to really shift the dynamics here? Um, obviously, you prefer to have things closer, but still it seems like Taiwan Semi and ASML seem to be the gatekeepers for, for, for this business. Yeah, I think that's right. With the CHIPS Act, uh, which was passed two years ago, we've seen a major increase in investment 
in the U.S., a huge step change relative to the previous levels. But even this big increase with several hundred billion dollars of uh, new chip making investment in the U.S. expected over the next decade, the reality is that almost all AI processors like those produced by NVIDIA are still manufactured in Taiwan and will be for the foreseeable future. So you really can't ignore Taiwan when it comes to the chip industry because that's where almost all of the cutting edge processors are actually manufactured.